Now that we've grappled a bit with the different Earth surfaces and different ways of understanding our geoid, which is our true shape of the Earth, and our ellipsoids, which generalize that, our topography, which is independent from both, and our Earth's mean sea level, which tracks the geoid surface roughly in the oceans. We might start thinking about how do we actually bring all of this together? How do we actually start setting up and communicating standards and details in a way that allows us to functionally work with this data? functionally work with all of these different components. And the way that we do that is by creating datums. Datums are referenced surveyed positional measurements that are connected with models of the shape of the Earth which give us a precise and a consistent and a shareable understanding of the planet so that we can share that information between each other, between GIS, and have a consistent way of communicating. Datums are built of these reference components. Datums function both regionally and globally, much like we saw those best fit ellipsoids, right? An ellipsoid can be a generalized model for the whole planet. It can fit really well in some parts and not in others. And so all of these combine into a datum. Now, there are lots of datums and lots of different components. Here's an example of some. We can see our lat long of the, the, the point we're looking at here, the Texas Capitol Dome. Longitude, latitude, X, Y. Note the little parenthesis, WGS 84. Yes, that long, we have to specify which datum, which system, which geoid are we using this lat long in? Because lat long in WGS 84 is different from NAT 83 or from anything else. So we've got lat long, and then we've got all these other systems, all of these datums. And some of them are close. WGS 72 is pretty close to. WGS 84, NAT 27 isn't too far off. But some of these are very off because they're not built for use in North America. They're not built for use in Texas. South American, European Kingdom, ARC 1950, Indian, Tokyo. They're not datums that are established or used for North America. And what do you know? The North American datums actually do pretty good. South American 69 does pretty well, too, right? Because we're in the same hemisphere. Datums and the definitions that we use to create them are specific to the uses or areas of practice that we want to deploy them. And datums and the associated coordinate systems and the associations of projections that come after are the core functional pieces of all the geospatial data that we use. Every piece of GIS data has to have this.
everything in GIS has to have this underlying detail to function. As we've seen previously in our introductory work, you don't have to know about this to use GIS, it just kind of comes with it. Or I should say, you don't have to know about this to start using GIS. But as you grow in analytics, as you grow in technique, as you grow with troubleshooting, as you grow in experience, so on and so on and so on, this becomes much more vital to understand. It'd be very rude if in the beginning of the course, the first data I gave you was Ordnance Survey 1936 data. And made you figure out why all your data was 500 meters off. Because we don't have that understanding. We don't have that capability. You might start, I probably even wouldn't start like a geology course or an earth science course with what shapes the earth? You don't even know. Might be a little bit too off putting at the start. But as we start to critique and dive into what these components mean, then we have to know more about how they function and how they operate. So this whole map projection process, we started with the geoid. The Earth is a lumpy space potato. We use some kind of mathematical best fit to turn it into a reference ellipsoid. Check. That reference ellipsoid is paired with other surveyed information, uh, our, our usage, all of these different components go into making that. From there, we still have to make a map. And that's the next two pieces of the puzzle here. Our reference ellipsoids are reduced to a perfect sphere. Now, the reference ellipsoid can be a perfect sphere. There are some spherical models of the Earth that work just fine as a generalization. And then we take that three-dimensional sphere and we transform it into a flat map. And that transformation is where all the problems start to happen. So projection, what is a projection? Projection is the systematic representation of all or part of the surface of a round body, three-dimensional, especially the Earth, onto a flat plane or surface, two-dimensional. All of our problems with maps emerge because we're taking a three-dimensional thing, the Earth, and turning it into two dimensions. And when you do that, you lose fidelity. You lose accuracy you lose detail. If you head to that link, you can see a bunch of different projections in action. But we'll pause here. And think about how this is the problem. In everything with maps, this is the problem. That much Earth that whole curve of Earth has to fit into that flat plane, to that piece of paper or computer screen. And what do you know as you pinch and shift and pull and push and squeeze and push all of that data onto that flat plane, you end up getting distortions and you end up getting issues and problems.